Hey everybody, what is to the upness? Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 3 on NES. This is your host, Tails Faraga. And let's begin by going outside and quickly saving. Alright, good, no monsters attacked us. Actually, I don't think any monsters can attack you on the way to the town, but where we last left off, we beat the game's first boss, and I warned us that we might be dying and losing all our party members very soon. Hopefully that won't happen. Welcome to the town of Yur. Or, as I sometimes like to call it, the town of Urrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Wait, we already had leather, uh, helmets. Shit fucker asshole. Uh, so, sorry for that language there, actually, but, uh, let's see. Uh, Donatello can't use, uh, knives anymore due to his job class change, so... Let's see, let's give him other armor, and... Can we give him a shield? No, we can't. I'll answer that for you. Uh... Once again, can't use knives. Uh, monks, however, have very high attack power. Even without equipment. Uh, let's give him two knives. Okay, and... Alright, sell... Let's see, let's sell all of our leather hats. And all of our cloth armors. Alright. Now, what's gonna be of the major importance right now, the majorly importance, the importance of the majorly. Alright, let's... Well, first off, I'm going to equip a shield to, uh, Leo over here. He seems to have not as much defense, even though he's going to be the one tanking the hits. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is buy nunchucks, twin nunchucks, for that. gonna get a long sword in the uh, place we're going to, but I'd like to give ourselves a long sword right now, too. So, like I said, not a lot of these are going to be uh, cut out yet. Like, once the videos get more and more involved in the action, rather than just starting out. Because this is going to kind of be familiarizing you guys with Final Fantasy if you're not familiar with it. So... No, wait. Oh, and then let's just give him a knife. Or you know what? Let's give him a shield. He needs a shield. And next up, I'm going to explain the road system. See how they're all, uh, kind of aligned to the right center and such? That's not gonna be good if we're gonna be fighting enemies. We want to have them aligned to the left. Or, some of the party members aligned to the, uh... What am I talking Left is the front row. Right is the back row. I am an idiot for not being being able to explain left from right. Terribly sorry about that, good chaps. Anyway. Alright, so now that we've got our HP and MP restored, and since we do have two magic users in the party now, we can use spells uh, once we obtain them. Um, I believe we're going to be getting a cure spell soon, and a ice spell. A uh, cure is a healing spell, as the name probably uh, tipped you off there. You're a genius if you knew that it was a healing spell. It restores a uh, amount of HP. It's usually a pretty low amount of health, but for what we've got right now, it's going to work. Out. Oh, these are werewolves. They are slightly tougher enemies. Alright, note that as a, uh, wizard, uh, wizards can't defend, which is an unfortunate thing. These werewolves shouldn't fall too... they shouldn't take too much of a hassle now that we're properly equipped and whatnot. I'm act I was actually kind of paranoid of going into this and such because on the previous two recordings, I actually got my party mauled, pretty much. Now we're gonna get some antidotes, too. And, let's see, which one of these was the right candle? The right candle, of course! Is the right candle. We've just opened up another hidden passageway. This one will lead us to the uh, treasure chest inside the storehouse. So we get more leather armor, dagger, cure spell, more leather armor, and a longsword. Alright, so we can equip him with another longsword. Alright, now, y equipping magic is a bit different in this game. You have to go to the items menu and then give it to them from there on. Um, what I just gave our, uh, what I just gave Donatello is our cure spell. Alright, so now, this confused me for a while. Note how I press that invisible space right there in order to open the door. 
Um, during the first time actually I recorded this, not uh, a slightly less recent recording, like sometime on like December 7th or something. Uh, I kind of uh, was stuck there, and I'm just like I'm fucking stuck, man. Why was I stuck? Why was I stuck? Because I didn't check to actually look through the invisible walls. Alright, so we shouldn't be taking too much damage now that we've got uh, party members that can endure more hits. And we've got better armor and whatnot. Now these are killer bees. Uh, killer bees are the first enemy you will encounter in this game that can give you status problems. Um, killer bees have an attack that has a slight chance of causing poison. Um, poison status is not good. Oh, uh, a party member that's poisoned will continuously lose health as you walk and as through the battle as well. Uh, the amount of health lost each turn depends on their maximum HP. Alright, three werewolves now. Um... Alright, this might be a good time to explain the cure spell. We're gonna cure all of our party members. And then just keep on attacking these enemies until they die from it. Hopefully they will die from it. These enemies don't have, like, too much health, and we've got... We've got... Semi-proper equipment, at least, so... And we've got a party member in the back row as well, and I'm gonna explain, uh, back row and front row. Characters in the front row will deal and take more damage than characters in the back row. It's always good to have your, uh, melee characters that can take more hits in the front row. And it's always good to have magic users who usually have less health and, uh, usually have less defensive power with their equipment, and put them in the back row. Magic ignores rows, and enemies can't be aligned into rows as well. So it's only your party members that are in rows. So no matter where an enemy is on the grid, you can hit them for the same general amount of damage as you can with a front if they're near you or far away from you. So it depends on your position rather than the position of the enemies. And I realize this is boring uh, commentary, but rest assured, we're going to the next town soon. Hopefully... Alright, so... Let's equip Rap with a slightly higher power weapon. Let's equip him with a dagger, and we can get rid of all of our knives now. So now you kind of realize that we're in a nice, peaceful town. This is the beginning of the game. Nothing is going to happen that's wrong, is it? You'd like to think so, but... And actually, I'm gonna stock up on the sundries, too, so... Um, the neighboring town, uh... Yeah, there's gonna be something, uh, there that's gonna be a bit of interest. So I bought another potion, that's cool. And we're also gonna get to our first formal save of the game. Hooray! Yeah, you can see I've had a, I had a uh, couple of practice files and such. So now we're going down to the neighboring town of Kazus. We're not in Kansas anymore. Kazus. Oh, I wonder what this person says. I love this guy. Scared of us. Sorry, I thought you were ghosts, too. This town is cursed. There's ghosts at the inn. Ghosts? Oh, come on. There's no such thing as ghosts. And... what? Whoa, shit. There are ghosts everywhere. The only thing that can reseal Jin is the mithril ring made in this town. I want my pretty face back. Jin, who was contained in the Cave of the Seal, was freed in the earthquake. I'm Sid from Canaan. The Nelb Valley got blocked by a boulder and I wasn't able to go back to Canaan. So I decided to stay the night at the inn here, and then this happened. Will you help me if I lend you my airship? It's hidden in the desert to the west. 
heard about the airship in the western desert. And that's a major plot point. This is the sound that makes major plot points. Anyway. There was a mithril ring made for Princess Sarah of Sassoon Castle. If you only had that ring. If I only had a ring. Ah. Maybe I'll put a ring on it. I don't know. So there's not really much we can do with this town yet. However, they said that there was a mithril ring for the princess of Castle Sassoon. So it might be of interest to go to the castle and see if we can get said ring. Alright, so what I'm gonna do, um, after this battle, if we encounter any more battles, then I will start cutting them out. Because now we get the gist of the battle system and the class system and such. Um, now anytime we do a class change and stuff and I need to explain what certain abilities do, or each time we encounter a new s not a new s a new set of enemies and whatnot, then I'll uh, cover that and not cut it out. Why do we keep missing? There we go. That killed it. Now, I, I want to explain the hit system real quickly. The more weapons you have, the more hits you can deal. Through, and that's the boulder blocking the Nelb Valley. Okay. Well, we're at the castle now, and... That creepy music is playing again. But hey! Everyone's been turned into ghosts by Jin. Since I was away on a mission, I was spared. If I had a mithril ring of, to, to... If I had a mithril ring, I could reseal the Jin. But the village of Kansas, where the ring is made, is in the same condition. What should I do? Uh, just stay there and look pretty full. Then turn into a dreadfully ghosty form and such. Once again, not really much we can do here. Yet. Alright, well, this is the throne room. The monsters in the cave of the seal are all undead. You might defeat them by casting cure on them. There's a white slayer in the left tower. It's a holy sword with power against the undead, but only a red wizard can wield it. I am the king of Sassoon. We have all been turned into ghosts by Jin's curse. We cannot return to our original form until Jin is defeated. Well, where is Jin? In the cave of the seal, north of this castle, near the Tesco. But without a mithril ring, Jin cannot be resealed. I heard that Princess Sarah had one. Oh yes, a while ago, a mithril ring was sent to Sarah from Kazus. But no one can find that irresponsible girl anywhere. Could she have been kidnapped by Jin? Oh, Princess Sarah. We'll go look for her in the Cave of the Seal. Oh, thank you. If I remember correctly, there is a hidden door in the cave. The skeleton should be the key. Get it? It's a skeleton key. Oh yeah. Please defeat Jin and save us. Okay, so... Now one thing that's uh, a bit different about the plot that I'm... Actually, there were a lot of things different about the plot early on that I'm going to explain. Um, first off, players of the DS version might not be familiar with that dialogue and such, or at least that part of the dialogue. In the DS version, the uh, king will give you a magical folding canoe. Yes, a magical folding canoe. So you can get over the water that blocks the cave of the seal. Of course, we have no such magic canoe, so... I wonder what we can do. Um, besides equipping our new ice spell, of course. This is ice. Um, it's also known as Blizzard in later Final Fantasy games. Ice is a single-use, uh... Or at least, it can target single or it can target multiple. It's best if a black mage uses it, but a, uh, or a black wizard, but a red wizard can use it as well. Two. A 2,000 gil, that's good, that's really good. And there's a pool of water down there, but we're gonna save that for later, because I think I might have a late, uh, plot point later on in the game. Um, also notice that... I'm going to explain a little bit about the characters in this game as well. Um, we started out with four party members. In the original version of this game, you only had one party member to start out with, a kid named Lunith, who falls into the cave. Eventually you meet Lunith's friend, Ark, who joins the party, then a girl from Kazus named Refia, who joins the party, and 
she's not a ghost somehow because she was away when the djinn struck. And then there was a character named Angus, who was a, a castle, a knight for Castle Sassoon. Alright, now there's a body of water over here, and since we didn't get anything that can cross the body of water, what can we do? Well, we did hear about an airship in the uh, desert, so we might as well explore. And explore we do. Sid's airship. And we rise from our grave! Ooh. Altered beast puns. However, there's not really much we can do here. Um, I'm probably going to make an attempt in the next video to go for the White Slayer, which is the sword that we're going to be using to clear out the undead from the uh, Cave of the Seal. In addition, we're also going to be meeting Princess Sarah and beating the game's next boss. Sorry that this is kind of a long video and such, but... I'm gonna try to hurry the pace in the next video, but until then, this is Towns for August signing out. Stay tuned, everyone.